Section two of the Wars of the Roses by Robert Balmain Mowat. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Pamela Nagami. Chapter one The Family Settlement of Edward the Third. There were many causes which produced the unhappy troubles in England known as the Wars of the Roses, but there were two things in particular without which these troubles could never have occurred. One was the family settlement of Edward the Third the other was the overmighty subject these two things were intimately connected with each other by his family settlement edward the third endowed his sons with great lands and inheritances and so the royal house was split up into several powerful families not necessarily in agreement with one another at the same time certain other noble families grew so wealthy and powerful that in time their influence rivalled and sometimes surpassed that of the king. Some of them, too, became connected by blood with the royal house. Gradually, as the fifteenth century went on, a curious situation arose. In Spain, the nobles used to say that they were of as good birth as the king, only less rich. But in fifteenth century England, some of the nobles might have said that they were of as good blood as the king, only richer toward the end of the wars of the roses the great constitutional lawyer fortescue gravely wrote that if law and order in the kingdom were to be assured it was necessary that the king's income should be greater than that of a great lord it appears that richard neville earl of warwick known to history as the king-maker had much more money to spare than the king had for the levying of troops but the overmighty subject is a feature of the later fifteenth century the family settlement of Edward III was in the later 14th. Edward III, the patriarch of the Lancastrian and Yorkist houses, had twelve children, two of whom died in infancy. His surviving children were five sons and five daughters. Of the sons, the eldest, Edward, born at Woodstock in 1330, became famous as the Black Prince. He died before coming to the throne, but left one son, King Richard II, who died childless, and so this line became extinct. The second son was Lionel, born at Antwerp in 1338. Lionel left only a daughter, who married Edward Mortimer, Earl of March, on the Welsh border. This line, too, ended in a female, Anne, who married back into the royal family by espousing her first cousin twice removed, richard earl of cambridge the head of the yorkist house the third son was john born at ghent or gaunt in 1340 john was married thrice and left many children and founded several important families the most famous of which is known as the house of lancaster this came through john's eldest son henry of lancaster or king henry the fourth whose son and grandson successively reigned before the line came to an end. The fourth son was Edmund, born in King's Langley in Hertfordshire in 1342. Edmund's son, Richard, Earl of Cambridge, married Anne Mortimer, as stated above, the surviving representative of Lionel of Antwerp. The fifth son was Thomas, born at Woodstock in 1355, his only male heir died without issue in 1399. All these sons were prominent figures in history throughout their lives. All, with the exception of Edmund of Langley, were ambitious and desirous of power. All had great estates by the gift of their father and by marriage. If one of them became king, it was not unlikely that the other members of the royal family would be strong enough to try to control the throne. Edward of Woodstock was made Prince of Wales, Earl of Chester, and Duke of Cornwall. Lionel of Antwerp was created Earl of Clarence, that is, of Clare, a great territorial honour in Suffolk. This property came to him through his marriage with the heiress of Clare in 1352. With her also came the great Irish estates of her family in Ulster. These estates when united in the next century with the Mortimer estates in the Welsh March, formed a substantial part of the endowment of the Yorkist house. 
john of gaunt was duke of lancaster a position which carried with it exceptional territorial privileges in that part of england he was earl of three counties derby leicester and lincoln and had honours and estates in nearly every county in england edmund of langley was duke of york and held estates both in the north and in the home counties when his line united with that of lionel of antwerp the combined inheritance was enormous the last was thomas of woodstock duke of gloucester who had large estates not merely in gloucester but in buckingham of which he was earl and in northampton and essex thus edward the third by his family settlement set up five great royal houses in england by the extinction of the first line in fourteen hundred at the death of richard the second of the fifth line by the death of the young duke of gloucester in thirteen ninety nine and by the union of the second and fourth lines through the marriage of anne mortimer and richard of cambridge in fourteen ten these royal houses were reduced to two there was no apparent superiority of one to the other either in birth or wealth with their friends and supporters they divided england between them this plan of allotting great appanages to the younger members of the royal family has often been tried in england france and germany and the result has always been bad in the early days of the norman rule william the conqueror left england to his second son william rufus and normandy to his eldest son robert on william the second's death england was held by his younger brother henry but normandy still remained with robert the result of this division of the norman power was fifteen years of warfare within the royal family again toward the end of the twelfth century henry the second gave great appanages to his sons the eldest young henry was reserved for the throne of england but aquitaine was given to richard and by a fortunate marriage Brittany was secured to geoffrey the result was rebellion and civil war within the royal house increased by the efforts of the youngest john lackland to establish himself like his brothers in some great appanage in france the donation of burgundy by king john the good to his second son philip the bold in thirteen sixty three set up the practically independent line of burgundian dukes who in the course of their feud with the orleanist branch of the royal family plunged france into civil war the strife of burgundians against armagnacs in germany certain ruling houses adopted the system of creating appanages thus the rulers of saxony created duchies for their younger sons with the result that at one time or another there have been in existence at least eighteen different saxon duchies not one of them of course being really strong so too in the sixteenth century appanages were created for the younger habsburg princes with the result that the central power was weakened and even domestic warfare was not unknown the reasons why this unfortunate practice of making appanages has so often been adopted are probably three in the first place kings like any other men are moved by affection for their children and may not like their younger sons to suffer merely because they were born later than their eldest brother in the second place it has often been thought necessary for the dignity of the royal family that all the princes of the blood should hold great territories and be almost equal to the head of the house in the same way the great napoleon planted out his own brothers as rulers of conquered states in the third place it has often been thought that the appanages would strengthen the royal house as a whole and would prove useful allies of the king and strenuous supporters of the crown this last idea was probably very strong with edward the third when he carried out his family settlement the early plantagenets had found the nobles too strong the great territorial baronage had limited the kingly power but these great baronial families often ended in an heiress what could be better for the king's purpose than to join one of his sons to such an heiress so that her great estates should be held by a member of the royal house her powerful family influence wielded by a prince of the blood edward the third thought that by this means the old centrifugal feudal spirit would be done away with 
and superseded by family loyalty by the strong ties of blood and interest which bound the younger sons to the head of the house to the crown but it was the contrary that happened the old rebellious feudal spirit was not superseded by a firm family allegiance to the crown on the contrary the natural family affection and interest of the younger princes were drawn away into the old feudal spirit the families of the younger princes became separatist and territorial rivals of the crown like the old feudal baronage but stronger because they accumulated more territories and because by birth they were royal the princes in the first generation might like john of gaunt remain loyal to their head but the second and third generation felt no such close tie. End of section two.